Thank you, Peter. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, friends of the earth, I bring you warm greetings from the government and people of my little country, the Cook Islands, and pay special tribute to our wonderful host, President Grimson, and Iceland at this wonderful, wonderful assembly. I thought I'd start by giving you a quick snapshot of my country so that you can have a full appreciation of the magnitude of our conservation efforts. The Cook Islands is both a small island state and a large ocean state. Small because it has a land area of only 240 square kilometers, but large because it has an ocean space of almost 2 million square kilometers. Like the inhabitants of the Arctic Circle, we are renowned voyagers and settlers, and the Pacific Ocean is our home. We are people of Polynesian cultural heritage, found within the triangular area from Hawaii in the north to New Zealand in the deep south and to the far-flung eastern reaches of Easter Island, Chile. We are people of the ocean. We live it, we breathe it, and it is the very essence of life for our people. Our 15 islands are small and include both lush and volcanic landmass, but mostly low-lying atolls with enclosed lagoons. After 50 years of self-governance in free association with New Zealand, our modern society values its natural and cultural heritage while striving for the highest quality of life for our people. Based on our wealth indices, the OECD will probably graduate my country to fully developed status next year, the only Pacific Island nation to achieve this status. But our journey is one that is fraught with danger and significant challenges common to all island states. These challenges are most obvious in our outlying islands, which are remote with small populations, but who demand and deserve the basic services of government, including air and transportation links, ports, electricity, hospitals, schools, and telecommunication services. We also have the double-edged sword of free association with our metropolitan cousin New Zealand, and our large diaspora reflect strong cultural and economic ties, but also the steady trickle of depopulation. Each of our small and vulnerable island communities is a treasure of unique legends, dialects, and traditions. It is from this patchwork we draw our identity as a nation and contribute our knowledge to humanity. The existence of these small communities must be protected. And we have risen to these challenges and been very innovative with competitive advantages that we have created. The backbone of our economy is tourism, providing around 60% of GDP. And here, our natural beauty and charm of our culture comes to the fore. With booming tourism arrivals, we are now at the pivotal point where we must determine what form of tourism yield is most sustainable without destroying our environment. Our ocean economic zone encompasses vast stocks of tuna fisheries, far more than we could ever consume. Fishery revenue is therefore an important growing source of income for our government. As resource managers, we have set the highest bar for sustainable fishing practices. We have eco-certification schemes in place, and our compliance and management regimes are such that we are the first Pacific Island nation to establish a quota management system for our tuna fishery. We have strong maritime security arrangements in place using sophisticated surveillance technology, you guessed it, from Iceland. 
and its enforcement operations regularly occur in our waters using our limited assets in cooperation with our defense partners, New Zealand, Australia, France, and the US, together with other members of the Pacific Islands Forum family. On our ocean floor, there are billions of tons of fish-sized metallic nodules, the richest in the world, with high concentrations of key elements such as cobalt, nickel, and copper. Almost a decade ago, we were among the first country to pass seabed mining legislation for this new frontier. We are steadily moving towards exploratory mining arrangements. Our offshore financial industry has carved out a niche for asset and wealth protection and is highly regulated to weed out those who seek to establish tax havens or money laundering. On the environment front, recently our parliament passed the Mariah Moana legislation, which provides an overarching oceans framework which would promote sustainable development by balancing economic growth interests such as tourism, fishing, and deep sea mining with conserving core biodiversity and natural assets in our ocean reefs and islands. This framework extends over the whole expanse of our EEZ, an area of almost two million square kilometers. I believe this is the first such framework for integrated management of the ocean from reach to reef and from reef to ocean. And I am pleased to say it was passed unanimously by our parliament, a clear expression of the unity of my people behind this historical framework and behind our duty to ocean governance. Hardwired into our Marae Moana legislation are exclusion zones extending 50 nautical miles around each of our 15 islands where no commercial activities, including fishing and seabed mining, will be permitted. These zones amount to a total ocean space of 324,000 square kilometers or 16% of our total EEZ. This exceeds the IG target of 10% set by the world as ocean areas to be set aside for conservation. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this legislation comes at a cost to my country, but it demonstrates our commitment to the protection of local food security, traditional practices, conserving our marine biodiversity and international ocean governance and conservation. We are engaged with emerging technology. Although we are not blessed like Ireland with natural resources to provide us with clean energy, my government has targeted 2020 as our goal to be 100% reliant on renewable energy. We have already passed the 50% halfway mark two years ago, and we are on course to achieve our target. We will remain vigilant to the prospects of technology and have invested in the multinational telecommunications submarine cable. Yes, the voyage has been both challenging but rewarding, but our future, unfortunately, is not entirely in our own hands. Climate change is not a myth. It is the reality for Pacific Islands, and dare I say it, perhaps it is our biggest challenge yet as mankind. Like any other small island state, my country is prone to the extremities of climate events. Our next generation may well witness the extension of the mighty tuna stocks that grace our waters. Today, Though the Arctic and Pacific Islands are among the most far-flung across this globe, we have a common interest to enjoin in our efforts to urge all nations to join us in combating global warming. I feel that small countries like us already carry a disproportionate burden, while bigger countries seem to be adopting a business-as-usual attitude. 
as the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands, this assembly for me is an important stepping stone towards participation in COP23 in Bonn next month. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, being present with you in Iceland has provided comfort to my thoughts that island states are truly oases of opportunities, although we find ourselves in an ocean of change. But whether we are small or large, small states, the fact is we are one mankind and our interests are interrelated. We share one earth, we share one future. Our humanity requires that we all join together in doing something about climate change. There is no other choice. Thank you for your attention.